Alright, this is Saint the Legend, this is another tutorial. Have you ever wondered how to make a very complicated animation? Not like this, I explained this last video. I've animated... Okay, you know how hard it would be to animate this line. This complicated line right here. That has ups and downs and directions. It's not a simple following animation. But there's a trick. Think about the driving line. I've matched the driving line to follow this line. That you guys ever thought thought about the lock-in driving line functionality where you can lock something to a driving line? It always stays to the driving line. Well, I'm gonna call this tutorial uh, physics, uh, complex physics animation. So the complex physics animation is uh, going to be, uh, I have a grappling hook here and I'm going to grab, so I'm going to follow this constant flow, and pretty much I'm just going to follow this straight line. So this is pretty much a mechanism that I've built. It's not an animation. This would take a very long time to animate, but it works the same time. You see? And since I have teleporters here, if we spawn, I can teleport to the next section. I can't do it again. But you could do it again because it's a physical animation. You just you would just need a uh, a portal and link the object to the portal to respawn and keep portalizing. But when it portalizes, you have to stop the physics and then portalize it again. So the portalization always work between the two points of portalization, you understand? So you could portalize an object from one area to the next, okay? With portalization techniques. So, working within the 3D space between 4D in an instance, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, so I'm gonna show you. Okay, so we have a, um, okay, so our mechanism is, as soon as this trigger goes off, we're going to, uh, turn on, okay, so this is, it's, it's by a trigger, okay, when the trigger turns on, it's going to turn on the physics for that sphere, it's going to turn on the physics for this area factor, which is going to push this thing. Make sure your collision, make sure your size is 2 meters, make sure it's locked to the driving line, make sure it's a fast object so it doesn't go off the drive, disconnect from the driving line. Make sure it has no restitution, make sure it has no buoyancy, make sure it has no friction, and make sure it has a certain weight to it so it doesn't bounce around so it's like like this like ice like ice no, no friction okay and this is your mechanism okay, and make sure it has collision okay and then basically what you got to do is you got to make the driving line from point A to point B then what you got to do is you got to have a following animation Okay. Alright. You could use this one if you want. I just mathematically put it down a bit. Make sure the follow this you put your X, Y, and Z coordinates to this ball. Anything that's gonna follow this ball will follow this ball. So you're gonna OPE your character to the ball. So your OPE character is going to be down there, hovering with the ball. So since I'm going to test it out here, I'm going to turn on these two, so you see what I'm saying. So since my camera I'm using has a physical bubble, you can see the constant flow. Changing your object gravity, or your object intensity, for your area factor, how much force it pushes, determines your speed for the animation. 
So I think this is kind of the best way to really animate if you think about it. Because then you can have a constant flow moving through, you see what I'm saying? Okay, you know what the problem is, guys? That's the problem. Okay, so make sure your area factor is always following the OPE. It doesn't have to be exact. It just has to push forward because it's following, remember? You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't really have to be... Well, it kind of has to be. But as long as your turns are not too sharp, it'll work. So what you, then you have to do is you have to uh, uh, create a uh, rotational value. Uh, so when it turns... Okay, so what you could also do is you could glue the ball and the thing. So when the ball turns, well, it's not going to turn. Um... Uh, Just make sure, just make sure that uh, that you can just turn up the speeds uh, with the data sources if you want to do extra turnings and stuff. Then it should work. You could program the orientation, but it gets a little complicated to follow the exact movements of the patterns, which takes a little bit of animation. Um, so as long as you have this set up, guys, you could make. Uh, I created a grapple system from point A to point B with physics. You see what I'm saying? So if you guys want to make AIs, you want to take certain paths, like AIs want to follow a certain path or something, like AIs, you can probably figure out some sort of system like this and it'll probably work. But, uh, that's how you guys do it. Since I don't want to ruin what I did, I'm going to back out. Load back in. Skytown Elysia, yes. Right to it. All right. Make sure these things have no collision. You're riding through it. Make sure these top wires have no collision. Should be set to go. And that's how you make a grappling hook animation. I hope this video was helpful. Every time I learn something new in the editor, I'm going to share it with you guys. So we can have amazing editors, amazing skill game builders. And you guys could take your maps to the next level like I do. So, keep making maps. Do what you love. Follow your dreams. Do whatever. Uh... I chose to make maps because I want to uh, make video games in the future. And Trials is a great way to train, you know what I mean? Like, you probably want to train more in the Unreal 4 engine, whatever engine you're training, but uh, I just love to do it in Trials because Trials already has a lot of the assets and textures and programs already made for you. 
tools and um, so you can do what you want, you know what I'm saying? And it's not broken like AO5. There you go, but it's not perfect, there's a few bugs. Alright. I had something in my mouth, sorry I didn't hear that. But, uh, yeah, I'm saying the legend, I'm out. I'll see you when this map is complete. I'm gonna do a showcase video on it with the music overlapping the video. I'm gonna do tons more animations. I still only got 25% complexity here. I'm probably gonna fit the entire Sky Town complex in here. Who knows? It's probably not gonna be in order uh, because. Uh, I won't be able to fit the whole thing, but I'm definitely going to do more animations. If I learn anything else from teaching myself, from the professionals of Metroid Prime, Retro Studios, um, learning how their animations function and stuff to make me a better animator, um, I'll see you guys on the next tutorial, whenever that'll be. So this is my three tutorials on three different subjects. Hope you guys could learn something, and uh, hopefully this is useful to you. Alright, I'm Saint Legend, and I'm out. See you guys.